Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on cerebral blood flow. Introduction Knowledge on cerebral blood flow is relevant in management of head injury, general anesthesia in patients with hypertensive disorders, techniques such as induced hypotension, etc. Cerebral blood flow is the amount of blood flow to the brain in a given time. Normal CBF is 50 mL per 100 g of brain tissue per minute. The brain weighs 2% of the human organism, yet receives 15% of the cardiac output. CBF is determined by the cerebral perfusion pressure, CPP, where CPP equals MAP minus CVP plus ICP. CPP stands for cerebral perfusion pressure. CVP, central venous pressure. This is often ignored as it is usually negligible. MAP, mean arterial pressure. And ICP stands for intracranial pressure. Cerebral perfusion pressure can also be defined as CBF times CVR, where CVR is cerebral vascular resistance. Normal CPP is 70 to 80 mm mercury. In order to maintain CPP when ICP is raised, MAP must also increase. Blood flow to the grey matter is more than twice that to the white matter. Factors influencing CBF can be related to the hagen poiseuille equation for laminar flow, where flow rate equals P1 minus P2 times R to the power of 4 times pi divided by 8 times L times eta, where P1 minus P2 is pressure gradient, which is related to the cerebral perfusion pressure. R stands for the radius of the tube, which is related to the radius of cerebral blood vessels, which is determined by the degree of vessel constriction or vasodilation, atherosclerosis, space occupying lesions, etc. L stands for length of the tube, which is related to the length of cerebral blood vessels. Eta stands for viscosity of the fluid in the tube, which is related to the hematocrit of blood flowing to the brain. Intracranial contents in adults, brain tissue 1.4 to 1.5 kg, blood 100 to 150 mL, CSF 110 to 120 mL, extracellular fluid less than 100 mL. Factors which influence cerebral blood flow Autoregulation This is the ability of an organ to regulate its blood flow despite changes in perfusion pressure. Myogenic mechanism is the primary mechanism where it is modulated by stretch receptors in vascular smooth muscles. The metabolic mechanism involves hydrogen ions, nitric oxide, adenosine, and other vasoactive substances which accumulate in tissues at low flow and they mediate vasodilation. Autoregulation maintains normal CBF over a wide range of MAP, typically 50 to 150 mmHg. This autoregulation process may take several seconds to complete when faced with a change in MAP. The classic cerebral autoregulation curve is an oversimplification as there is not a neat linear relationship between MAP and CBF at each end of the curve. Changes in perfusion pressure may be regional, which is not shown in this curve. The normal curve. Two points are marked on the x-axis, 50 mmHg and 150 mmHg. A horizontal line connects these two points at the CBF of 50 mL per 100 gram per minute. This range is referred to as the autoregulatory range. Above the autoregulatory range, CBF increases as MAP increases. A maximum CBF occurs at some MAP where no further increase in CBF is possible. Below the autoregulatory range, CBF decreases as MAP decreases. The curve does not pass through the origin as live patients cannot still be alive if either CBF or MAP is zero. The chronic hypertension curve is represented by an identical curve that is displaced to the right. The autoregulatory range resets itself under these conditions. In drug-induced hypotension, this situation is represented by an identical curve that is displaced to the left. 
The autoregulatory range resets itself under these conditions and the curve is shifted to the left. PaCO2 A linear relationship exists between PaCO2 and CBF in the range of partial pressures from 3.5 to 10 kPa or 26 to 75 mmHg. The normal curve First, the intersection between normal PaCO2 and CBF is marked. When PaCO2 is less than 3.5 kPa or 26 mmHg, cerebral vessel constriction leads to tissue hypoxia, the line becomes horizontal, subsequent reflex vessel dilation occurs. When PaCO2 is between 3.5 to 10 kPa or 26 to 75 mmHg, CBF doubles when PaCO2 doubles. When PaCO2 exceeds 10 kPa, cerebral blood flow is maximal at around 120 mL per 100 grams per minute, the line becomes horizontal. In chronic hypercapnia, this situation is represented by an identical curve, which is shifted to the right. Buffering mechanisms reset the autoregulatory range. PaO2 A horizontal line is plotted to the right of a point at PaO2 equals 8 kPa and normal CBF. When PaO2 is more than 8 kPa, CBF is constant. A sharp increase in CBF to up to around 100 to 110 mL per 100 gram per minute occurs when PaO2 drops below 8 kPa or 60 mmHg due to cerebral vasodilation. This is represented by a steep upward curve to the left. CBF doubles at PaO2 of 4 kPa or 30 mmHg, maximal CBF of 100 mL per 100 gram per minute is reached at about PaO2 of 4 to 5 kPa. The cerebral vasodilatory effect resulting from low PaO2 overrides any other reflexes to ensure maximal oxygenation of brain tissue. Hyperoxia is associated with decreases in CBF. CMRO2 CBF is linked to CMRO2 by a mechanism that is not yet fully understood. CMRO2 stands for Cerebral Metabolic Rate of Oxygen Utilization. It refers to the rate of oxygen consumption by the brain for metabolism. Normal CMRO2 is 3.3 mL per 100 gram per minute. Cerebral metabolic rate can also be measured by assessing the rate of brain glucose utilization. Flow metabolism coupling is the phenomenon whereby the perfusion to an area of the brain is matched to the metabolic rate of that area. It may occur either locally or globally. The x-axis represents CMRO2 and the y-axis represents CBF. The normal values for both CMRO2 and CBF are marked on the graph. At a CBF of less than 18 to 20 mL per 100 gram per minute, brain cell death occurs, the line is discontinued below this CBF level as there is no CMRO2. Temperature and CMRO2 CMRO2 changes with changes in body temperature. The relationship is linear rather than exponential. The gradient of the line changes at about 27 degrees Celsius. At the brain temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, a 1 degree Celsius drop in temperature is accompanied by a fall in CMRO2 of 6 to 7 percent. At 27 degrees Celsius, a further 1 degree Celsius drop in temperature is accompanied by a fall in CMRO2 of 2 percent. CMRO2 will be 30 percent of baseline at 27 degrees Celsius and 10 percent of baseline at 17 degrees Celsius. Effect of anesthetic agents on CMRO2 and CBF Anesthetic agents influence CBF according to their effects on CMRO2, cerebral vasodilatory effects, and cardiac output, peripheral vascular resistance, MAP, and thus CPP. Inhalational anesthetic agents The dashed line represents coupling between CMRO2 and CBF. All these except sevoflurane cause dose-dependent vasodilation which results in an increase in CBF. Sevoflurane has minimal vasodilatory effects until 1.5 MAC is achieved. When MAC exceeds 1.5, the position of sevoflurane will move directly upwards. 
Intelligential anesthetic agents also decrease CMRO2, thus they uncouple the relationship between CMRO2 and CBF. They decrease CMRO2 but are associated with an increase in CBF as they vasodilate the cerebral circulation and abolish autoregulation. This action is dose-dependent and can be offset to a certain extent by the vasoconstrictor effect of hyperventilation. Cerebral autoregulation is abolished at 1.5 MAC except for sevoflurane. Sevoflurane has only 30% of vasodilatory potential of isoflurane and does not impair autoregulation. Nitrous oxide causes an increase in CBF and CMRO2. The response to changes in PaCO2 is unchanged. Intravenous anesthetic agents. All these except ketamine causes decrease in CBF, decrease in CMRO2, and maintenance of the coupling between CMRO2 and CBF. Autoregulation is not affected. Ketamine causes increase in CBF and increase in CMRO2. Avoid ketamine in patients with raised ICP. Opioids. Direct effects are minimal on CBF and CMRO2. However, indirect effects may be significant. For example, respiratory depression-induced hypercapnia. Rheology. When plasma viscosity decreases, there is increase in blood flow. However, hematocrit of less than 30% is associated with decreased oxygen flux. Kindly refer to the video on oxygen delivery for further details. When plasma viscosity increases, there is decreased capillary blood flow. When hematocrit is more than 50%, there is risk of intravascular sludging and reduction in CBF. ICP CPP equals MAP minus CVP plus ICP. Thus, CBF is compromised by increases in ICP from its normal 10 to 12 mmHg. A video on ICP will be made in the near future. Measurement of cerebral blood flow. Katy Schmidt method. This is an invasive technique that measures global CBF by using nitrous oxide as a diffusible tracer. It does not provide information on the CBF to focal areas of the brain. It is not a technique used in routine clinical settings. The fixed principle is applied in this method, which refers to flow is equal to the amount of a substance taken up or excreted by an organ divided by the arterial venous concentration difference. CBF equals quantity of substance taken up by the brain divided by AV difference. Procedure While the subject breathes 10% nitrous oxide for 10 minutes, pet peripheral arterial and jugular venous bulk blood samples are taken at set intervals to measure nitrous oxide concentrations. At the end of 10 minutes, the nitrous oxide concentrations are equal in both samples. The venous nitrous oxide concentration is the same as that in the brain at this time. The arterial and venous content of nitrous oxide are plotted over time during either wash in or wash out of equilibrium of nitrous oxide. The area between the arterial and venous curves provides the quantitative measurement of CBF. The arterial venous difference in oxygen content may also be measured. The speed at which the arterial and venous curves equilibrate is a measure of nitrous oxide delivery to the brain. Transcranial Doppler Ultrasonography This is a rapid, non-invasive, real-time method to assess cerebral vascular function. It can be used in clinical practice to assess relative changes in flow, diagnose focal vascular stenosis, detect embolic signals, assess the physiological health of a particular vascular territory by measuring blood flow responses to changes in blood pressure, which assesses cerebral autoregulation, changes in ETCO2, which assesses cerebral vessel reactivity, cognitive and motor activation, which assesses neurovascular coupling or functional hyperemia. Transcranial Doppler ultrasonography helps in clinical diagnosis of acute ischemic stroke, vasospasm, subarachnoid hemorrhage, sickle cell disease, brain death, etc. The velocity of blood flowing through large cerebral arteries, such as the middle cerebral artery, is measured using the principles of the Doppler effect, which will be discussed in a future video. The diameter of the measured artery has to be determined and must not vary for the flow indices to be accurate.
which includes peak systolic velocity and diastolic velocity, systolic upstroke or acceleration time, pulsatility index, time average, mean maximum velocity. Kindly refer to the article by Prokayasta et al. regarding this topic for further details. Positron emission tomography can be used as a research technique to measure CBF. CBF is measured by assessing uptake by different areas of the brain to fluoro-2-deoxyglucose, which is labelled with a positron emitter. Scintillography and SPEC scanning. Radioactive xenon is used to trace regional cerebral blood flow. Enhancement by CT or MRI may be applied. Anesthesia and cerebral blood flow. For a discussion on the influences of intravenous induction agents, volatile anesthetic agents and opioids on CBF, kindly refer to the previous section. Arterial pressure. Chronic hypertension shifts the autoregulatory curve to the right. Drug-induced hypotension shifts it to the left. If autoregulation is abolished by the use of volatile anesthetics, CBF and ICP increases in parallel with increases in MAP. Venous pressure. Increase in CVP results in decreased CPP and decreased cerebral blood flow. To avoid increases in central venous pressure, Whenever possible, avoid or minimize head down position, coughing, straining against a ventilator, impeded venous drainage from the head and neck, volume overload, IPPV and PEEP in anesthetized patients. Steel and inverse steel. Cerebral steel. Autoregulation is lost in focal areas of injured brain tissue, whereas elsewhere it is retained. Cerebral vasodilation may further compromise these areas by diverting blood away. Cerebral inverse steel. The vessel constriction associated with decrease in PaCO2 from hyperventilation may divert blood away from normal to damaged brain, where vessel constrictor responses have been lost. ICP. A video will be made on this topic in the near future. These are my references. Thank you.